Hey, this is Bill. Coming up next, Ryan Speakman, pastor at Living Word, and also uh, author and scholar of the Word. He'll be in the studio with me up next on your Celebration Radio Network. Well, about 21 minutes to the top of the hour on your Celebration Radio Network. This is Bill, and good Friday morning. I hope you're having a fantastic start to your day with your Celebration Radio Network. And uh, just walking in the studio a few moments ago, and and uh, we're going to be doing this uh, more regularly, Ryan. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm liking that idea that uh, you I am loving this idea. With. <laughs> so, oh, was it my idea? I thought it was your idea. It's well, God's idea. Yeah. God's idea. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. go with that. That's, that works. <laughs> Sounds good. It does. Yes. And um, what we're talking about is what we're going to be doing um, from now until. Uh, the end of time. Until Jesus comes back. <laughs> well, that's the end of time. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe even into the millennial, you know, who knows? Yeah. We'll see so, how it goes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, we're going to take your questions, right? That's what the, the gist of this. We're going to record them off the air. Yeah. And then uh, we'll uh, kind of... Listen, the phone's already room. ringing. I know. Off the I know, hook. I know. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's so exciting. We're going to go to a song in a moment and, and uh, take that call up. Um, but uh, um, we're going to then... The following Friday, um, basically cover those questions and yeah, which, and whichever then, ones that we you know choose to include on there, right? <clears throat> so on, and of course, you know, we're talking about the end times. That's yes. that's you know that's my, the topic, my shtick. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so I would say, yeah, questions and comments. Also, uh, I'd I'd like to hear you know uh, what the listening audience, you know, maybe they have some ideas about things. Maybe they just want to make some comments. Uh, so, so what we're thinking is that um, so someone calls in, we record it off air. If we decide to use your question uh, or comment on the next show, then uh, you win something. Should we use the word yeah. win? We gift we can, you with something. Yeah, we gift you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, either copy of uh, my my book, uh, part three is coming out soon. So you can choose part one, part two, part three. Uh, you know, call in three times, you get the whole collection. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And, you know, if someone, you know, already has my books or doesn't want my book, you know. We have uh, CDs for backups. We have CDs, backups. Yeah. all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, so I think yeah. this will be fun. This will be fun. So, um, and, you know, again, the main focus of, of my ministry and teaching everything is uh, the end times. That's that's what we're talking about here. Um, Israel is another, you know, very important topic, which, of course, yeah. factors into the end times. Um, and, you know, if someone just has a general question about Christianity in general, you know, serving God, being filled with the Holy Spirit, we can field those two. Right. We right? Will, Why yeah. not? Yeah. For yeah. Sure. It's 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 a uh, it's all about the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> right. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and um, I'm thinking that uh, you know we should do this like two Fridays a month kind of yeah. thing. You know, because we'll need one Friday to take the questions and the following Friday to to answer those. So this being the last Friday of January. Yeah. Um. You know, I'd like to kind of continue on, um, you know, that that general basis. And then what we'll do is um, I already have interviews set up for other Fridays of the month. So um, February, you know, starts tomorrow. So obviously um, the next so, so Friday. We're, we're thinking every other Friday we'll get together and, yeah, and do kinda, the show. And yeah. yeah. See how it goes. Okay. Yeah, that's, sounds good. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And At then, least two Fridays then, a month. So okay. that way it gives us a little time to. Uh, get the answers together and, and, you know, do a little research. You know, the, and this is really the main and, point is that um, I love to just answer questions off the cuff or comment on people's comments. Uh, and we can do that. Um, but, but with this uh, approach that we're planning to take, uh, it really gives us, you know, like, like Bill, like you're saying, um, time to, you know, pray, hear from the Holy Spirit, do some studying. So, so we're not just going to, you know, uh, do our best to answer your questions, speaking to the listeners here, um, but we're going to really put some time and effort into yes. coming up with, you know, good, solid answers. It's, right. it's important, you know, it is. Second Timothy 2.15, we need to rightly, rightly divide, divide the word, the word of truth. truth. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Be diligent. Yeah. Be workers who are not ashamed. <laughs> yes. Yes. So this is our plan and our goal. Going yeah. to have a good time. So, yeah. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And I want to thank you in advance for, um, you know, because you don't get paid to do this. I do. Oh, I'm not getting paid? No. I, I didn't look no. at the contract. Darn it. Yeah. yeah no, I'm not. <laughs> so, in, in fact, fact, this in is fact, your passion in fact, I, anyway. It, it, oh, my gosh, Pat. So, it, this is my calling. Yeah. I, I have to do this. I will stand before God one day, as we all will. And he's going to ask every one of us, what did you do with the calling I put on your life? 
Yeah. Every one of us has a calling. We all need to work to fulfill that. You're, you're doing yours, Bill. So just blessing the listening audience, you know, every morning, Monday through Friday, right? <laughs> yeah, and Saturdays with Recovery Radio, too. I'm yeah, here, yeah. So. And how, how many years have you been uh, on the air? Um, let's see. I got, uh, well, about a month and a half away from nine years. Wow. So. Such a long time. So, yeah. So, and yeah. So look, look what God's done in your life and you're faithful to it, no matter what's going on, you know, circumstances. Um, here, unless I'm, you know, I've taken two vacations in nine years. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the, the devotion that you have to what God's called you to. You know, we all have to be like that. And, and it doesn't happen autom- automatically. Do you know, I've actually used the excuse like with, you know, like I just said, I'm working on, you know, wrapping up part three of my books, which we've been talking about for what, two years now. <laughs> it's been about two years since I published part two. And uh, I actually started to get into that mode of like, you know, well, it's in God's timing and blah, blah. And, you know, if God puts a call in our life, it it's in our hand. God's putting it into our hand right. to uh, to apply it and to work toward it and to be diligent so, you know, whether we're, you know, we don't feel like it or we're tired or we're distracted, uh, it's up to us to make a, 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 a very, very diligent effort every day to put our hand to that plow and do what God's called us to do no matter what. So I'm encouraging myself when I'm saying this, I need to, and, and yeah, Bill, I've been doing too. it, man. I've been working on part three, like every day, <laughs> every day that, you know, that I'm not up at astronomy camp with my kid. I, yeah. Just that, got that back from astronomy like camp. Money, so. <laughs> yeah. So those three days I didn't work on the book, but, um, but, uh, but, but, you know, there, there's just, there's nothing more exciting in life, more fulfilling than doing what God's called us to do. Uh, Amen. if we take a break from it and start to back off, life just gets boring in my opinion. I mean, for me, it just starts to feel kind of, you know, a little bit empty, Mundane a little bit, yeah, yeah kind of meaningless. That rut yeah. thing. And, yeah. But when we're working hard toward what God's called us to you know what? You know why we're here, Bill? You know why we're here? To build the Father's kingdom, to mm-hmm. advance the Father's kingdom, to manifest the kingdom of Christ in this earth. And he's coming back soon. And it's up to his bride to prepare this world for his return. Yeah. Uh, and we just, we've got to be diligent. I mean, everything else is going to burn up. Every other, you know, um, endeavor I have and ambition and, you know, my work right, and right. money and, you know, our houses, whatever, uh, It you know, it's all going to it's not going to matter when the time comes. Yeah, exactly. What's going to matter is what we've done for the kingdom. Yeah. So let's all king, kingdom builder. Yeah, exactly. So we need to have that mindset. Yeah. So, so let, let's all work hard. Put and, on your work belt, get your hammer and let's go to work. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't be lazy. No. <laughs> Procrastination is not. <laughs> that's, our a, that's actually one of the passages I brought this morning about, you know, slumbering and, Oh, that, you know, those, yeah. those who sleep, sleep at night and those who get drunk or drunk at night and, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna Ooh. look at that, All right. and if we don't get to it this Friday, then next Friday, whatever. I brought a bunch of stuff. <laughs> oh, good, a lot, lot of scripture. <laughs> yeah, so next Friday, um, we're gonna do another show. Well, then, actually, actually, next Friday, I'm out of town. Okay, so it's not I, next Friday. Might have mentioned this to you off the air, but yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Skylar. Uh, I'm always bragging about my kid, my 11 year old daughter, Skylar. So well, uh, she is pretty amazing. <laughs> she is. She takes after her mom. Um, <laughs> But uh, she won her um, spelling bee at her school. Yes, she so, did tell me that. Yeah, yeah. So she's uh, she goes to Calvary Christian Academy, such a great school, and they're part of a of a, a larger group, a larger network of uh, Christian schools, you know, throughout the Southwest. So um, next Friday up in Vegas, um, the entire you know school organization is going to get together, and and all the kids from the different schools are going to compete. So she's, you know, studying her spelling list. It's it's about, you know, five, six pages long. We're gonna go up wow. there, stay in a hotel and you know, make a oh, make cool. a time out of it and yeah. hopefully Sounds she'll like she'll win the spelling B or she'll get a spanking. So No, I'm yeah. kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding. No one calls CPS. <laughs> we yeah, we're we're just proud of her. She does what she can. So yeah, so I will be out of town next Friday. So Okay, so it's in then uh, not next Friday, so that's fine. So we we'll come up with the, the we'll come up with a Friday schedule, yeah, or whatever. Nope, actually, the following Friday I already have a have a guest scheduled, so it will yeah. have to be the last two Fridays of February. Okay, hey, this is our first official show doing this, right? That's yeah. going to become a regular thing. So 
listening audience, we promise we will work out our schedule. <laughs> yeah, and if we have to do it the last two Fridays of the month or every other Friday in the uh, month. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm thinking, too. I don't too. think it doesn't, you know, it really matters. It could be the first and the last. No, we'll just we'll just be so, flexible. As yeah. long as we take those questions and uh, that gives us time to go through them and, and right. figure out which ones we want to use. Yeah. You know, because that might take some time as well. Exactly. Um, you know, because you'll have to stay here or you'll have to write them all down before you leave or i can email you the you know the actual calls you know so there's a lot of logistics that we still have to work out on that yeah but, uh, i'm, I'm very big on to... kind of figuring things out as we go along so yeah same yeah here. let's let, let's see how it goes but it, it's leave i think it up it's a to great listeners. plan yeah leave it up to listeners yeah, yeah. but uh we we've you know bill and i prayed about this and and we're hearing from the holy spirit and yeah amen he's he's got a, been... a fun plan it's so. been over a year since we started trying to work towards this. So yeah, at least that long. I was thinking yeah. a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. So and and a huge thank you to Farron and Debbie for uh, greenlighting this. Yeah, we amen. so much appreciate them, and we're uh, fully submitted to their leadership over over this That's ministry, right. your celebration station, and because boy, you talk about a calling, Farron and Debbie. Yeah, they've been at this for. I always ask, and I was twenty the years. Number, twenty plus. years. Yeah. Yeah. Over over twenty years. I know because. Yeah. I've been in Havasu for 21 years, and I know that they were, you know, doing the station, running the station mm. at that time. And of course, uh, Debbie's father, Pastor Tatham, is the one who founded the station. Yep, thirty, almost 37 years ago. 37 now. years yeah. ago. Wow, yeah, um, pretty amazing. Yeah, you talk about you talk about a calling. July, I, it, would, it will be 37 years that it's been on the air. Wow. So, and it started, you know, a little over a year before that with planning and. Yeah, you know, land purchase and building the building, and you know all of that stuff. So yeah, and if and if you yeah. go on um, knlb dot com, there's actually uh, photos on there from the groundbreaking ceremony. Is yeah. that right? Yes. Yeah, and also the church too, Stonebridge yeah. Church. Yeah. So so yeah, exciting, cool. exciting stuff. Yep. But uh, and now and now uh, knlb your celebration station. There's different call letters, right? Yes, there is. Yeah. It depends on the city, right? So, some are full powered um, transmitter that uh, you know, like Yucca Valley, um, that's has a different call letters. Right. Las Vegas has different call letters. Yeah, Prescott, you know, which um, is why KSNH we say your, your celebration station because yeah. it dip- and there's it's there's a network, a couple so. a couple dozen, several dozen. Yeah, there's uh, there's a few. Yeah, quite I don't a few. even know the exact number. It's yeah, between thirty and fifty. Oh, that many cities. Wow. Wow. So five <clears> states <throat> physically, and then. You know, when you add in the internet and satellite, yeah, you know, it's around and, the and world. The, and the so. signal, I think, actually goes into into seven states total, and even into Mexico a little bit. It goes into Mexico with Yuma, yeah, yeah. But and it also in goes states. into Texas because of Tucum Carry when that's on. Actually, right now it's off, but hmm. uh, Farron had to order a new transmitter. So, oh wow, once he drives, you know, sixteen hours, yeah, to <laughs> one way. Yeah. Uh, so, to, so see, uh, see when, when we get tempted to get lazy in our calling, just think about Farron. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. always. Yeah, driving yeah, around, always and driving working on towers, and yeah. yeah. In fact, he went to Barstow, I believe, yesterday. Oh wow! So yeah, yeah. he's constantly um, yep. on the road. Usually, he's so. going to have a lot of jewels in his crown in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to go to a song. Give you a chance to go to those phones and. Ask us a question about the end times and uh, Pastor Ryan Speakman's latest book that's going to be coming out very soon. Very soon. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know exactly when, but he's 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 working very diligently in getting that published. So um, these final days, yeah. that's what we're talking about. 800-721-9313. Seven minutes after the hour in Pastor Ryan Speakman, best-selling author and scholar, is in the studio with me this morning, uh, associate pastor at Living Word. Yeah, associate here. pastor, serving under my uh, favorite pastor in the whole right. world, Pastor Marine Collins. Marine Collins. Always yeah. say that. <laughs> she had a birthday recently, didn't she? Uh, December, yeah, December yeah, 7th. Yeah. Pearl Harbor Day is how I remember that. So, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah one, 49 one and holding, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right around there. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Living Word Family Church at 1890 West Tacoma. And, um, you guys and I, got an event coming up. Uh, um. I think it's uh, right around Valentine's Day. Uh, yes. So yeah. so this Wednesday, so. I'm um, resuming my Wednesday night class, which is about the end times, like we talked about here. And then uh, the following Wednesday, which I think is the 12th, yeah. Yeah, is our uh, Valentine's Day banquet. Yep, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, you know, if, if anyone wants to come out for that, it, it's going to be great. And 
Um, and then the Wednesday after that, I'm back doing my class again. And mm-hmm. I teach every uh, Wednesday at 6 o'clock at the church. Now, do you do it so, in a different part of the church, or, or is it in the main sanctuary? I mean, is uh, that no, what your Wednesdays teach in the, are? Or? Yeah, actually, I used to teach in the sanctuary, but now on Wednesday, we also have a uh, class that's more on, you know, faith and topics like that uh, in the sanctuary. And then, which is always a great class. I mean, you know, if, if you want to come out and you're not interested in the end times, what I teach, uh, then, you know, we have that class in the in the main sanctuary. Uh, we have different teachers. That's uh, led by uh, Pastor Tracy, who's Pastor Marine's uh, daughter. Daughter, right. Yeah, yeah, a wonderful old lady, one of my best friends. But, um, and then I teach my class in what we call the fellowship hall, which is kind of more more set up for a classroom setting. And I've got a big screen TV and, you know, show slides. We look at scripture, but... Okay. Always have a great time. We have children's church, nursery. Awesome. Yeah, my wife runs the children's church, and yeah. All right. Yeah, we we, we do stay busy, <laughs> <laughs> which which we love, so. Yeah, and then uh, you're going to be gone, like you said, on February 7th with your daughter in, in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm, for the spelling and, bee, yep. And uh, there is, uh, um, have you ever heard of Night to Shine? I It doesn't ring a bell. The Tim Tebow Foundation? Well, yeah, I've heard of him, but yeah, okay, I didn't know the name of the foundation. All right. Yeah, um, okay. he, uh, what he does is, I'm I'm pretty sure once I explain it to you, you'd be like, oh yeah, I know that about that. Um, it's where they um, do a prom night for all the autistic and special needs children. Yeah, I, I do know, yes, of yes. course. I didn't know so the name it, of it. So it's but, called yeah. Night to Shine. Okay. And uh, next week, Friday, um, my birthday actually oh, is... Oh, uh, happy birthday. <laughs> the um, Night to Shine at Calvary here in Lake Havasu City. Okay. Neat. So when you said that you were going to be gone, I was like, wow, I thought you were going to be part of that. Because, you know, your daughter goes to their school. So so we're talking about Calvary Baptist. Yeah, Calvary, Calvary Baptist. Baptist yeah. 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 On, okay, uh, I didn't know about that. Sweetwater Avenue. It'll mm-hmm. be at the main campus. Nice. And, uh, yeah, so it's a pretty cool event. Yeah, um, yeah. That's great. You know, he uh, uh, Tim Tebow started this several years ago where he would... Um, limousines and red carpet wow. and you know and it's just oh, it's a so whole sweet. really cool event yeah um for uh these special needs children you know they wow. crown all of the men the king of the prom and the women <laughs> yeah. are the queen Everybody you know and, the prom prom queen and king yeah and so it's wow. a really cool thing and and uh calvary is doing that um next week friday night so what, what time next friday so people know um it's gonna be uh it's for eight, children ages 14 and older and it's from 6 to 9 p.m Okay. And yeah. you can go on their website and uh, sign up. There's a form that uh, you can actually print off. And, and uh, I don't know if you can e-sign it or, or if you have to print it off and sign it, but it's mm. a, like a permission form. Yeah. Um, you can also get involved. But there's a volunteer list and, and things like that as well. Yeah, that's great. Um, so, yeah. yeah our I'm our gonna, community does such great stuff. We have so we many have wonderful some things going wonderful on. wonderful yeah. churches in this town that do things like this, like yours, that does, well, that potluck for Valentine's Day. I mean, right. that's very cool. And all the and churches you guys here, do working. other events like that oh, throughout the year. Oh, all the time. So, yeah, in, fact, in fact, I think we're going to start doing a uh, what we call a family fun night once a month, uh, you know, on a Wednesday. Hilltop um, is doing that this Sunday. Uh, I actually. saw that. Yeah, I saw in the that morning. on Facebook. So, yeah, yeah so. family fun day or whatever it's called, family yeah. fair or something like that. But from, we're uh, members of the LBCC, the London Bridge Christian Churches. That's mm-hmm. led by uh, Pastor Bybee from the Presbyterian Church, Community Presbyterian, and also Pastor uh, Dale, Dale from Ray. Lakeview. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it, it's j- just such a great town. I mean, all the churches get together. We we pray together. We you know talk about what's going on. We plan events together. But um, this is what the body of Christ is supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, just exactly. loving each other, working together, reaching out. You know, we don't have to see eye to eye in every single doctrinal point. And believe me, me with the end time stuff, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, we, yeah, we do. But, um, but yeah, just everybody loves each other and, you know, iron sharpens iron. And so I had a, a friend text me while we were, you know, on the break. And uh, she suggested that we kind of explain more what we mean about the end times for people who, you know, maybe are new believers or, or not believers yet, but they're listening. Um, so uh, the Bible talks quite a bit. Actually, in every book of the Bible, it, it's touched on from Genesis to Revelation about yeah. uh, what we refer to as the end times. And, you know, people say the end of the world and um, and, and it almost puts like a Well, not almost. It very much puts a negative spin on the whole you know concept of it. What we're talking about is we're talking about the, the greatest time in human history, the greatest moment in human history, which is when uh, Jesus, who we all know, died on the cross 2,000 years ago, spent three days in the tomb, and then, and then was raised from the dead. 
And then 40 days later, he, he ascended in bodily form up into heaven mm-hmm. where he sits now at the right hand of the Father. But, but very soon, he's coming back to this earth in physical form to establish God's manifest kingdom here on earth. And the Bible tells us that, and this is Revelation chapter uh, 20, if you want to go take a look at the details, 19 and 20, and even beyond 21, 22, um, that, that uh, Jesus is going to rule and reign for a thousand years uh, in the city of Jerusalem, uh, uh, in the rebuilt temple, Right. Okay, and that that can be proven scripturally in the Old Testament and New Testament too, uh, and 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 during that thousand years, we'll be helping Jesus to restore, basically, you know, people say back to the you know condition of the Garden of Eden. Um, that's that's a, very much an overgeneralization because now we have you know technology and infrastructure, and you know <laughs> you know the world's changed quite a bit. The point though is that is that the you know the spirit of the Garden of Eden, which is us. Uh, serving God and 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 in constant you know uh, communion communication uh, with God, helping Jesus administer His government throughout the earth, uh, and just bringing the earth back to the state that God intended. At the end of that thousand years, then God will actually create a new heaven, new earth, a new Jerusalem, um, and then it'll be you know very much like it was in the Garden of Eden. You know, the Tree of Life, uh, the River of Life. Uh, so you know we're, we're talking about the end of the world, but but. But it's it's As this we fallen know it. world. It's this like sinful, the song says. Yeah, it's this sinful you know. world. You know, Paul says that uh, Satan is the god of this world. That's the world we're talking about. Yes. coming to an end. Right. Uh, not this earth. You know, Bill. This earth is eternal. God created us to live on this earth, on this planet, uh, for the rest of eternity. Yeah. Um, you know, we all talk about. You know, someday I'll be in heaven. I just can't wait. Uh, we're not designed for heaven. <laughs> god designed us human beings to live and rule and reign. Uh, in this realm, and of course, you know we, we're connected to heaven. We always will be. Uh, I kind of assume we're going to be able to travel back and forth between you know Earth and heaven, and probably throughout the entire universe. You know, who knows? It, it's all well, I'm speculation. So anyway, very exciting. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd be surprised if that wasn't the case. But uh, but the point is, um, we're we're talking when we say the end of the world or the end times. It's it's the end of everything that's bad about this world because we let Satan in. Mm-hmm. Adam and Eve, you know, fell yeah. for his trick in the in the garden, and we let him into this world. We handed our authority over to him. Uh, now we're taking it back, Bill, because uh, through Christ, we're given back that authority yeah. that, that Adam and Eve gave away to Satan. So we have it now. So right now, uh, Bill, you and me, and most of our listening audience who ever saved, who's ever you know born again and part of the kingdom now, we're ambassadors in this world. We have the kingdom inside of us. So. So even now, the kingdom is here now in mm-hmm. us. Right. But uh, but the day is coming when Jesus himself will be back here. And, you know, so it, it's it's exciting. This is something to look forward to. to That's why we're excited about it. It's not, oh, I can't wait for the world to explode. <laughs> you know? And on that note, um, just recently, um, our doomsday clock um, got set to just under two minutes to midnight. Oh, okay. I don't know if you were aware of that. Uh, but, I had uh, heard, it's yes, the I closest the to clock, midnight yeah. in history. So, and, the, and this, um, the this is a secular clock. thing. Yeah, this it's isn't a secular a Christian thing. thing. Right? Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, it's not. it's it's very much the even world. even the atheists. You know, the yeah. people that don't believe that there's a god that we're here by chance. Yeah, you know that uh, this whole thing just started with a bang and in you know and a lot of yeah they, they you believe know, that we're here by chance. Fourteen years and, later, you know, yeah. we're we're walking around on two legs. All that and, nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is complete nonsense. But e- but even they sense it, right? Yeah, so, they so do. The, you know, this is the thing. We you know we we all every single human being sent. We just kind of sense it inside ourselves. Something's getting ready to break. We're, we're we're coming to the end of something. So so you know uh, the Jews believe it. They believe that we're coming coming to something. Some some great you know climax of human history. The Muslims believe it, Hindus mm-hmm. believe it, Buddhists believe it, and like you're saying, even atheists just sense, you know, something is coming. Well, this is what we're talking about, and you know, we we believe that we are that generation. Bill, I'm convinced of it, and it's not just because I just have a, a feeling. <laughs> uh, I'm convinced of it because for, for 42 years now, I've been studying about this topic, about what the Bible teaches about uh, the last of the last days of, of this world system as we know it. And uh, there are so many signs that, that the word gives us, and they're all lining up. We, we don't have to just kind of uh, think that we might be in the end times on a hunch. Now, how many people scoff at that, too? Christians. Yeah. Uh, and, you, know, they, you know, we talked about this before. 85% of Christians worldwide, there's 2.2 billion Christians worldwide. 
85% don't even believe in an end times per se. Now, again, this doesn't mean that we're, we're not all sensing something is coming, right? But but uh, 85% are what we call amillennialists, postmillennialists, preterists. They they don't believe the, the biblical description of the end times, like when you and I talk about it, right. uh, the seven-year Great Tribulation, the reign of the Antichrist, right? But, but uh, the Bible doesn't just kind of like lay those things out and then, uh, you know, you know, keep it all mysterious. Well, it's, just, you know, it's going to happen when it happens. So many Christians believe that and live that way. The 15% who do believe in the end times, most of those don't understand that the Bible gives us very, very clear indicators of what those signs are. And uh, we're seeing all the pieces laid out. Listen, this, this uh, peace deal, right? So, so right. um, yeah, we were talking we about were that talking during about the break. That, yeah. yeah. So, uh, for three years, President Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, uh, who, by the way, is a is an Orthodox Jew. Jew. Yes. Okay. Amazingly, uh, that's not a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> no, <He's>, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> three years, Jared has been uh, working over in the Middle East, uh, meeting with leaders of you know dozens of, of of countries in the Middle East who, you know, up to now have just wanted Israel wiped off the map. He's been meeting with them and, um, you know, formulating, working out this, what what uh, Trump calls the deal of the century. Okay? Yeah. And he's not kidding. And, and really, it's the deal of, of all time, not just the century. Uh, and what the, what, the, what the concept is, is, um, you know, Trump's, Trump's solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which is famous for being the most unresolvable conflict in human history, really, it's it's not solvable. Started long time ago. Well, yeah, all the way back to Isaac and Ishmael, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you know, pretty long ago. Yeah. And um, so, but you know, President Trump, just like every single U.S. president, back to Lyndon Johnson, who was president when I was born, aging myself here. <laughs> that was in 1967. But every single president, Republican and Demo- Democrat, they've made that 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 is the holy grail of mm-hmm. U.S. foreign policy is solving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Well, Jared Kushner, who is just a brilliant man, genius. You know, you look at him, he, he, you know, he's very mysterious and, and a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of Christians, a lot of scholars have been, uh, wondering is Jared actually mentioned in the Bible. So in Daniel chapter nine, <laughs> okay. Verses 20, and I 24, said this earlier. You said well, it during the break. Yeah. yeah the Bill prince. himself. Yeah. Said it. <laughs> yeah. Well, but see, I've said it too. So, so all yeah. my life I've been watching for, what uh, the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter nine, verse twenty four through twenty seven, seventy weeks. Characteristics fit, brother. I mean, yeah, he, he's he's referred to as the prince of the covenant. Also mentioned in uh, uh, Daniel chapter ten, Daniel chapter eleven. So it, it's all part of the end time story that the that the archangel Gabriel presented to the prophet Daniel. And uh, what is a prince, Bill? Well, it's the son of a king. Okay, so so if if the prophet Daniel was going to write about a king, or, or I'm sorry, about a, about a U.S. president. Thousands he would of years in the future, consider him a king. Yeah, yeah. and 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 if uh, and if he was to refer to because that's son, what their leadership was back then. I right, mean, they didn't have presidents. That's what a president is. A president you know, is essentially a king in biblical yeah. terms. Uh, and if he was refer- to refer to the son of a president or even the son-in-law of a president, yeah, how, how would he prince. be referred to yeah. in 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 the Old Testament as a prince? Um, so that it's compelling. Now, I'm not saying yeah. that Jared is that guy. Here, here's another critically important point, and because a lot of our listeners, you know, know a little bit about the end times. Some of some of our listeners know a lot about the end times. Um, I want to emphasize that the that the prince who confirms the covenant, the, the seven year peace treaty that Daniel talks about, is not the same person as the Antichrist. This is no, something that this is something that our yeah. that our listeners could call in and comment about or ask a question about. Um, and again, we're inviting people to call in with questions, comments, and then we're, we're going to address them, you know, the, the next time we get together. But, um, but the prince is not the same person. And we know this because in Daniel chapter 11, it talks about the Antichrist coming, coming in and swooping down. He, he comes from Damascus. I'm, I'm convinced of that. Definitely comes down from the north. He's called the, the king of the, the, the north, right? Um, he comes down and, and uh, takes over Israel and, and it says that he... That he that he you know uh, sweeps away the 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 uh, the Jews before him and also the Prince of the Covenant. So clearly, the Antichrist is not the same person as the the Prince of the Covenant, but um, the person who establishes the seven year treaty that brings peace, this ostensible peace. It's it's a fake peace, right? Mm-hmm. Very very fragile, very false peace, really, uh, b- uh, between the Jews and some group that they're in conflict with. 
Well, to, today we know that group is the Palestinians and more broadly uh, the, the entire Middle East, the entire, you know, Islamic uh, Middle East, right? But um, but but it, it says very clearly in Daniel, it's clear that that he is a an agent of the hegemon, whoever, which, whichever nation on earth is the head of the world system. Well, who is that today? Of course, it's the United States. It also uh, indicates that it's a permutation of the Roman Empire. Who is that today? That's the United States, <laughs> right? We we yeah. purposely founded this as a based on the the, the Roman uh, Republic model. You look at the architecture in Washington D.C. It's all Roman style architecture, uh, right? I, I mean, our founders fully intended yeah. this to be the a modern day permutation of the Roman Empire, and it is. So I'm not saying that Jared Kushner is that prince that's mentioned in Daniel. I'm saying that for the first time in my life, I've been looking for a candidate. He's a candidate. Yeah, he, he, he could is. be. This deal that they just uh, unveiled and announced on Tuesday. So it was President Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu uh, flew over to Washington, D.C., uh, along with Benny Gantz. Yeah, I his, think that was his, on Tuesday. Yeah, it was on Tuesday. It was on yeah. Tuesday. So they flew in on Sunday. And then uh, Netanyahu and also his, his political uh, rival right now, uh, Benny Gantz. He's the leader of the Blue and White Party in Israel. Uh, Netanyahu's Likud Party. Um, he came too, which is astounding. That right there is amazing. Both of them met with uh, President Trump, and on Tuesday, Netanyahu and Trump unveiled this uh, peace treaty. So now we have the full text of the treaty. Bill, this is amazing stuff. <laughs> you know, um, at the very least, I, I'm I'm officially declaring this uh, major type and foreshadow of the seven year peace treaty in the Book of Daniel. This uh, probably is not well. It's not that treaty, and I'll tell you one in a second. It's going to transform or lead into eventually this, this this treaty, possibly within the next five years before Trump's time in office is over. Do you see what I did there? Trump's yes, going to be the second term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but what's what's missing from this treaty is the rebuilding of the temple. Okay, uh, let let me just make this clear: the third Jewish temple being built on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. That is the number one sign that we're watching for. This is the yeah, number one indicator is. that Jesus is coming back extremely soon uh, because when construction of that building begins, that's that's approximately, maybe exactly, the beginning of that seven-year peace treaty, which coincides with a seven-year period that we refer to as... The Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation. So this this marks the last seven years of human history. And look how close we are. The, the one thing about this treaty that's most interesting, this this proposed peace plan that 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 the president just unveiled that kushner put together uh is that israel will uh finally exercise full sovereignty over the entire city of jerusalem including the old city the old city specifically mentioned in the in the text where the temple of the mount is that's what's amazing is that the temple mount's not you know overtly mentioned right that's that's the old city that's what the old city is It, it it's uh that's the temple mount so so if Israel finally exercised full sovereignty, how far <clears throat> are we away, hypothetically, from the third temple being built? Could the third temple actually be part of a, of a, of a, of a, uh, of a treaty or a covenant that evolves out of the one that was just unveiled? You know, we're close, man. This, this, this is all happening so fast. I've, I, have to, talk, I have to get my book series yeah. done <laughs> before we're going to talk more about that coming up in a few minutes from now. Our phone number 800-721-9313 for any questions you might have of uh, Pastor Ryan Speakman, best-selling author and scholar of the end times and his ministry on Wednesday nights at Living Word Family Church on Acoma Boulevard. What is it? 1890? 1890 West Tacoma. Yes, sir. Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m.? <clears throat> 6 p.m. 6 p.m. All right. And then you could also find my ministry online at thesefinaldays.org. Yeah. And uh, from there, you can go to YouTube and watch your videos. Yep. You can uh, get his book off of Amazon and, and go to my other, Facebook page. And his Facebook page yeah. is there. I'm up to yeah. over 26,000 followers on, on Facebook. Oh, wow. Awesome. From all over the world. That's uh, cool. I told you, including Antarctica. Yeah. Because I specifically one... did an ad campaign <laughs> to Antarctica because I want to say all seven continents. Yeah. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Our phone number again, 800 721 
Get those questions in, 800-721-9313. Well, 21 minutes to the top of the hour on your Celebration Radio Network. In the studio with me this morning is Pastor, Associate Pastor, Ryan Speakman, and best-selling author and scholar of the final days that we'll be living on this green and blue marble that uh, <laughs> goes around the sun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the third rock from the sun, if you want to call it right. that. Um, Forever. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty amazing. It's going to get better from here, though. That's what the word promises us. Yes, so yes, it does. That's that's why we love this topic, right? Just and uh, we just we just had an excellent call. Yeah, Jermaine. Yeah, from Jermaine. So, and I know I know Jermaine's still listening at the moment. So, Jermaine, thank you for that call. So, that's actually uh, officially our first call for this you know new show that we're doing now. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, you know we're encouraging people to call in with questions and comments. Uh, about the end times, and then and then the next time we get together, which will be in two weeks, we decided yes. right. Um, then the we're going to we're going to do our best to answer the question. So, but yeah, Jermaine, wow, he he, uh, our first question, it's a good one. It is, so, and you know what, Jermaine, we actually need you to call back. Yeah, because um, we gotta J- get Jermaine, your phone you, number. you uh, said that you just tuned in. So what the plan is is that whenever we use someone's question or comment, that uh, we're going to send you a free gift to thank you for the question or comment. So I'll send you a, a free copy of uh, either one of my books, part one or part two. Or if you don't want the book or already have the book. Or want to wait for books, part three. Or want to wait for part three, then we could also send you a music CD. But the point is, Jermaine, yeah, please call back so we can get your phone number. So, <laughs> yeah. And other people, when you call in, yeah, we don't get let so Bill and I forget. We, we yeah. hung up with the guy and forgot to get his phone number. You know, I'll so. just, I'll, here's a sneak preview because I'm going to say it. So so Jermaine, ask about, uh, is the United States mentioned in End Times Prophecy? Most scholars say no. I very enthusiastically I, yes, say same yes. Here. It, we are all over it. <laughs> Actually, in the book of Daniel, <laughs> I mean, believe it's it or crazy not, how they could yeah. not think that. You know, oh yeah, we're in Daniel. We're in Revelation. Eagle. You know, it's, I mean, it's you know the man. Exactly. I mean, it's, Revelation hello. chapter twelve. Very good. So, <laughs> so I, I want to read this real quick. Just a, a, a passage from Scripture. We need to get some Scripture in here. It's a mm-hmm. show about yeah. the Word of God, after all. So um, there's a there's kind of a joke that goes around. You know, so the rapture. Are you pre-trib? Are you mid-trib? Are you post-trib? Well, uh, a funny answer to that is that I hear a lot, actually. I'm pan-trib. It'll all pan out in the end. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, so, and and here's my challenge to everyone. Um, that that mentality, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a funny joke. It's cute, right? But but that's that's not at all what the Word of God says. So so the question is, does, does God really want us to know about the end time? So, so Bill and I, I mean, uh, this takes a lot of chutzpah. That's a Yiddish word. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> On our part. Gumption, to, <clears throat> um, determination. Temerity. Yeah. Audacity. Tenacity, yeah. Yeah. Audacity yeah. to, uh, to, to, to imagine that we can actually, you know, know about the end times, understand to be able to, you know, talk about this on the air like we do. I mean, I mean, you know, who are we that we should know about, the, you know, that we could, that we could possibly know what God has in or what the timing is or when, you know, how can we sit here and say, we believe that we are that generation um, so I want to I want to start us off with a, 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 a passage of scripture here, and it's going to surprise you, Bill, because I'm not going where you think I'm going. This I'm just going to stir the pot here a little bit, okay? <laughs> uh, Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. This is Jesus himself talking about the end times. Here's what he says, and and it's going to sound like Jesus is saying what I just said. How 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 dare we think that we can know about no, this stuff? Yeah. Here's what Jesus says. He says, Jesus says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the son of man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken the other left, two women grinding at the mill, one taken the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Now, does that sound like Jesus is saying we can know about his coming or the timing of it? Isn't that funny? And and Bill, I hear this quoted a lot. People, you know, quote this to me. They, Mm -hmm. you know, usually paraphrase, of course. But, you know, we, we're not supposed to know the day of the hour. We, we don't know anything about when Jesus is coming. Yeah, it kind of sounds like Jesus is saying that. 
late. Now this was now he spoke those words right before he got arrested and went to the cross. These were yeah. some of his parting words. Actually, part of what we know is the Olivet Discourse. Okay, we're going to be talking a lot longest about that. Sermon in the New Testament, correct? The second of longest, Jesus, exactly. Second speaking. only to the Sermon on the Mount. Very good, yeah. good memory, Bill. Gold That's star right. for that. <laughs> for Forty. Okay, he so he went to the cross shortly after speaking these words. You know, I mean, like that night, uh, and spent three days in the tomb. Was resurrected bodily from the grave. Spent the next forty days on earth mm-hmm. in his physical body, and then just before he ascended to the Father, he spoke these words to his disciples. Acts chapter one, verses six through seven. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, meaning his disciples, this up on the Mount of Olives, right before he ascended saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. This is another one that I have people quote to me. Again, Bill, how can we have the audacity, the temerity, the, the gall, the chutzpah, again, I love, I love Yiddish, to, to imagine that we can know about the end times and even know the timing and be, be able to say, Hey, we are this generation. When Jesus himself seems to be saying the opposite, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want to take a break and I'll start to give the answer? <laughs> no, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so so Jesus Jesus spoke that on the Mount of Olives right before he ascended. It's not for us to know the times of the seasons. He And he was saying it to his disciples standing up there with him, his 11 disciples. Of course, Judas Iscariot was out of the picture at this point. And the, and the new 12th guy hadn't been added yet. Right. Um, however, check this out, though. On the other hand, uh, the, the larger passage I, I read before that about the days of Noah, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that, again, is, is from the Olivet Discourse, uh, Jesus' second longest sermon, as you said. It's, it's Jesus' great dissertation about the end times where he goes into tr- tremendous detail about the signs that will precede his return and tremendous detail about his actual return, how those events transpire. Um, he shows up in the clouds. Uh, the dead in Christ are resurrected physically. Right, right. Then we who are alive and remain, and I'm uh, paraphrasing, that's actually from verse Thessalonians, that we get raptured up to meet him in the air. But but in Matthew chapter 24, here's how that all begins. Uh, uh, Matthew 24, verse 3. Now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples, same place, right? The disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So there they're asking the same question, right? But Jesus answers completely differently here. Okay. Uh, he says, he go, he's, he, go, he launches into, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's huge. He launches into, again, what we call the Olivet Discourse, where he starts to talk about uh, you'll see, you know, wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and famines, earthquakes in diverse mm-hmm. places, right? Yeah. And uh, false Christ will will rise up, and 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 they're they're going to hate you, and many of you will even be killed for my my namesake. Uh, and then, you know, verse fifteen, he 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 goes into the actual seven year great tribulation. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, right? Uh, that's when the antichrist actually seats in the temple, half seats himself in the temple, proclaims himself God or shows himself to be God. And then, and then Jesus says, you know, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Uh, and then there will be great tribulation. He actually coins the term great tribulation, such as has not been seen from the beginning of the earth, nor ever will be again. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would even right. be saved. And then he says, there'll be false Christ and false messiahs. And then finally he says, uh, and then you'll, you'll see the sign of the son of man uh, appearing in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then we, and then we get the whole so, so it, it's almost like a paradox, but Jesus is saying to his disciples, you know, don't worry about this in, 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 in this moment. He gives them instructions right before he ascends to the Father. I want you to go out and preach this gospel to all mm-hmm. of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. See, we're supposed to do business until he comes. This, yeah, is, this is the kind of, kind of a, 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 a dichotomy. I don't want to say duality. It's more of a dichotomy because they, they seem contradictory. We're supposed to do business until he comes. We're supposed to focus on the task at hand, which is advancing the kingdom of the Father now, proclaiming the gospel, bringing as many into the kingdom as we can. But at the same time, Jesus himself gives us tremendous detail about the times that are coming, the the end times, the last of the last days. Does God want us to know about these things? Yeah. 
Oh my gosh! I mean, it's every, everywhere. Every, every <laughs> listen, every book of the Bible. You you could give me an example of a book, and I could I could I'd, I might have to go and research it, the details. Uh, but but even God Himself, uh, what what is His parting written word to mankind? It's the Book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. It's not a small book. You know, it's not like no, Philemon or, chapters, or Jude, I mean, yeah. It's a huge book. Yeah, where God Himself goes in tre- into tremendous detail about the end time. So. Does does our Father in heaven, does Jesus himself want us, me and you, the body of Christ, to know what's coming? Yes. To know the signs that are going to precede his return. And can we understand these things? Well, of course, because God's not the author of confusion. He he wouldn't put all this to paper. Jesus himself wouldn't wouldn't, you know, give his second longest sermon on this very topic, uh, unless we we could understand it and God wants us to. He wants us to know yes, and to be ready. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are this generation. We we are the generation that will see Christ return. I'm convinced of it. Amen. And if you have a question for Pastor Ryan Speakman, call 800-721-9313. That's 1-800-721-9313. Well, 11 and a half minutes after the hour on your Celebration Radio Network and Pastor Ryan Speakman, Associate Pastor at Living Word Family Church, is in the studio with me this morning. We've had some fantastic calls, Adam and... Uh, uh, Jermaine, others, Jermaine, Jermaine yeah. and, and uh, others have called in this morning, um, not only wanting your book, Pastor, but uh, um, with some great questions and comments. So Yeah, yeah so we ha- we already have our content for the next show. But, you know, um, listening audience, we just encourage all of you, you know, uh, please call in. We, the, we want to make this show that we're doing now once every two weeks. We want this to be about, you know, you. We want it to be a conversation. Uh, we... And and who who's the main you know person in this conversation? It's the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're going to spend time in prayer, um, you know, leading up to, to right. the next show, uh, and and ask the Holy Spirit to you know uh, anoint us to to come up with 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 uh, good answers to these questions, good comments. Um, so please call in. Let's let's uh, make this a conversation. And but I'm excited, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, this yeah, our first too. our first show doing this. It's going to get you know more tightened up as we go. You know, we'll, we'll get we'll get better at this. But uh, wow, we're off to a good start. Got some, we are. Got some good content for next next time we're together, which is February fourteenth. Yeah, Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Yep. yep. I told I told Bill I bring him chocolates, but he said no, <laughs> no. <laughs> what, now, no, what do you they, get? What do you get every time I come in, though? Uh, I get a uh, blended mocha from Human Bean. So. Yes, I, I show up yeah. with gifts every yep. time, so, and uh, yeah. some of those uh, <laughs> chocolate covered uh, espresso beans too. Yeah, so from Human Bean. Oh my yeah. gosh, they're the best. They are. Yeah. I love those little things. We're Christians. We're not supposed to be addicted to anything. So I'm just yeah. saying they're really good. That's all I'm, I'm saying. Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah. Guilty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So repent later. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, what, what well, it, you had some more scripture you wanted to cover. Don't you know, forget what Benjamin Franklin more. said. He said, coffee is proof that God loves us <laughs> and wants us to be happy. Yes. He didn't actually say it about coffee. I'm paraphrasing. Oh, okay. Yeah. He said it about, well, anyways, okay. Never yeah. mind. Look it up. <laughs> but I'm saying coffee. All right. Yeah, so so uh, so we're we're again we're talking about the end times, and um, we're 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 making this a conversation with you, the listening audience, and and so I start off with this question: um, uh, How can we dare to assume that we can know about the end times? You know, and again that joke: You know, I'm not pre-trib, post-trib, I'm pan-trib. It'll all pan out in the end. Does God want us to know about these things? So so I I say all the time whenever I'm on the air that I I'm I'm convinced that we are the generation that will see Christ return. And people will mock and they'll say, well, every generation's thought that. That's actually not true. And at no, some point not, on one right. of these shows, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, to to prove that, that historically. I'd say within the last hundred and so years, maybe. But before that, no. And and that I would expect because it was it was uh, right around the mid to late 1800s. We're going to talk about all this stuff eventually as, as mm-hmm. the shows go on. Starting in the mid, especially going into the late 1800s, things started to happen in this world that started the development started to occur that started to, to, to point. I mean, and this is, this is serendipity. It's not serendipity. It, you know, just beyond imagination, it's clearly the hand of God orchestrating and moving all of human history toward this singular focal point, which is, I'm going to say it again, the, 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 the temple on the temple Mount, the third temple. So events started to, to transpire. So I would actually expect the body of Christ starting in the 19th century. Okay. The 1800s, to start to get this sense, and not just the body of Christ, Jews are sensing it, even Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, even atheists are sensing mm-hmm. this, that we are getting very, very close because we are. But before the 19th century, 
I'll prove this historically. I've got historical documents I get, we'll, we'll get to at some point uh, that prove that, that that is not the case. The body of Christ was not anticipating like every second of every day that, that some of some of the scholars over you know throughout Christian history have understood it's a it's a future event. Well, it's no longer a future event, it's now. How can we know? Look, here's what Jesus says, Matthew chapter twenty four, verses thirty two through thirty five. Uh, this is this is also you know from the all of it discourse Jesus great intentions mm-hmm. he says and we've all heard this before now learn that but but listen to this now learn this parable from the fig tree when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves you know that summer is near right mm-hmm. you look you look at a fig tree and and we know we can tell by the signs that summer is near you know we look at the the branch it's tender it's putting forth leaves so we. Just by looking at this tree, we, we know that we're in a certain season, that something is coming right around the corner based on this sign. Verse 33, so you also, when you see all these things, now, this is what he's he's he's, he's presenting these, you know, th- this point right after he's finished uh, giving the prophecy portion of the, all the discourse. So we're talking about um, verses, Matthew chapter 24 again, verses 3 all the way through uh, 31. That's a whole lot of scripture. Where Jesus it goes is, into yeah. great detail about the events and conditions leading up to the last of the last days. Then he goes into great detail about the actual seven year great tribulation and the reign of the Antichrist and his return to earth. Jesus has returned to earth, the resurrection, the rapture, right? And then he says this. So also, when you see all these things that he's just described, know that it is near at the doors. That what is near? His return. Because mm-hmm. that's what this is all about. It's about Jesus' right. return. So Jesus is telling us, look, I'm, I just told you what's going to happen. Wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, earthquakes in diverse yeah. places, false prophets. The world's going to turn against you and hate you for my name's sake. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll suffer tribulation. Many of you will even be killed. Uh, and then he even says, you know, you'll see the Antichrist rise up. and all. Um, Based on these signs I've given you, know that it's at the doors. You know, um, earlier, there's, there was an earlier event, Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to read verses 2 through 3. Where the Pharisees and Sadducees had, uh, those were the religious Jewish leaders of the time that were not all that great guys. Yeah, right. Uh, most of them. Um, but they come to Jesus and they're kind of taunting him. And he says, it says, Jesus answered and said to them, this, this is so cool. Pay attention, people, myself included. When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and threatening hypocrites you know how to discern the face of the sky but you cannot discern the sign of the times so here jesus says it even more strongly and boldly and it's based on his particular audience in that moment that that look he's talking to us bill we we can we can look around we we look at the weather we say okay you know hey it's getting cloudy and the weather report says it's going to rain so we know it's going to rain and he says how can you not discern the sign of the times so so god's word it gives us uh dozens even hundreds of of signs conditions on this earth that that will immediately precede the return of christ and how many christians throughout the world don't don't even pay attention we we don't know what the word says about the intent that's why we want to talk about this stuff this is why we're supposed to talk about this stuff there are so many instructions to us as christians to the body of christ we know this that it's not just about the end times we know that Again, we're supposed to conduct business until Jesus comes. We're supposed to uh, uh, live our lives according to uh, Scripture and righteousness, be filled with the Holy Spirit, yeah. bear his fruit, manifest his gifts, proclaim the gospel. We're supposed to be serving the Lord every minute of every day. But at the same time, we're supposed to be watching for the signs that the Word of God gives because because our job, Bill, is not just to hang out here, status quo, business as usual, for the rest of forever. This world's going to come to an end, this world system, and we, the body of Christ, are supposed to be readying ourselves for the return of our king, the return yeah. of our bridegroom, which is Christ. So Amen. that's what this is about, and we can know, Bill, we can know that, that, the, that, that the end of this world system is, is near. We can know that the return of Christ is upon us, and man, it is. We, we're, we're, you know, this peace treaty we talked about earlier yeah. between the U.S. and Israel, I mean, just... Uh, yet another major sign. We're getting very, very close. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, it is yeah. very, very close. E- even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yeah, amen. that's at the end of Revelation, right? <laughs> right. And then it. I love how it ends. 
How does it end? Amen. <laughs> yes, that's right. It does. Very good. Just amen. Yeah. You know, I think that's Revelation chapter 22, verse 21. Yeah. Yeah. Just that one word. Yep. So be it is yeah. what I mean, amen means. So, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's, it's cool. So, so everybody, you know, let's, let's live our lives, you know, according to our calling and focused on the kingdom, uh, loving our loved ones, loving other people. Uh, at the same time, please let, let's pay attention to what's going on. And, and, and be ready, not just ready, be excited about Jesus' soon return. So this is what it's all about. Yeah, I, when when he told us to occupy until he comes, if you study, war, you know, soldiers and military and, you know, because they were surrounded by Roman soldiers. Right. And a lot of Jesus' teachings were about the Roman soldiers and, and uh, what we were, um, you know, the the signs of the times and all of that, the, what they're the day that they were living in, they were living in captivity. Absolutely. And uh, they were being occupied. Yeah. By the Roman soldiers yeah. at the time. And so when you, when you study that, we're to occupy. Yeah. So in other words, we're to be prepared to go to battle at any moment. Yeah. So that's not someone that just, you know, blindly, walks around that's not someone that just sits in their chair and does nothing all day long or you know whatever where it doesn't mean to just live in the moment or live you know wow. live our life out that's right it means that we're to be prepared to go to battle at any moment yeah that's a good so. word that's a good word bill yeah you, you know you know what kind of christian satan loves which might be the wrong way of putting it. He loves <laughs> Satan. Loves a Christian who is asleep in the trenches. That that's yeah. That's what 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 kind of a, a soldier the enemy loves in in a war, right? So mm-hmm. you know, there, there's even a story about the Vietnam War, and I'm not sure how exaggerated it is or whatever, but it's still a, a great analogy that uh, that that so many of the soldiers got hooked on you know drugs, you know o, yeah. you know opium and opium and marijuana and, and yeah, yeah, there and was it, a lot of that, yeah. So the story is that the it was actually the Viet Cong who were supplying the drugs to the mm-hmm. soldiers. Uh, so what the Viet Cong just wanted the soldiers to have a good time. Was that the idea? No. They just liked them, wanted them to have fun. They wanted them to be doped up and 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 asleep and lazy, lackadaisical, so that they wouldn't fight. Or yeah. even if they did come into a fight, that the that the Viet Cong could kill them easily because they were so doped up. And that's what the enemy wants for the entire body of Christ. Yeah. And and the word warns us over and over. Jesus tells us, uh, "Be awake." Even the Garden of Gethsemane, didn't he say that to his disciples? Mm-hmm. Couldn't you guys stay yeah, awake could, with me just, just for one just, hour? Yeah, just one hour. <laughs> uh, and three times he did that. Yeah, yeah. And what was the excuse? You know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. You know, that's that's no excuse. That's a, la- that's, that's a <laughs> <laughs> lame. <laughs> yeah. So so we yeah. need to be in the fight. You know, you and I were talking about this during the break that that uh, that I see your Facebook posts and that you're very very bold in your beliefs and in your stance. And, mm-hmm. and I admire that about you and how many Christians, you know, we don't want confrontation. You know, I don't want to get into a fight. People, I encourage we, it. <laughs> yeah, We're in a fight. I mean, whether you want to be in one or not, we're, we're in a war and, yeah. and, and we're not just in a war. Now we are in the great end times war that, that, uh, you know, transcends, you know, the entire spiritual battle that, 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 that the people of God have been in since the Garden of Eden, right? Right. We're in the ultimate moment in this war. It's it's the end times portion of it. Um, you know, spiritually, the, the entire world, this world system, is openly against the people of God, which includes Christians and Jews both. That's extremely mm-hmm. biblical, what I just said. Yes. And and you and I, like you said, we you know, the, the war talks about putting on the armor of Christ and the weapons of our warfare. Yeah. Uh, again, I'll say it. Wh- whether you want to be in a fight or not, you're in one. Yeah. The, the only question is, what, what's the outcome going to be? Are you are you going to be part of the the victory that's coming, or have you surrendered? Second Thessalonians chapter two verse three. The apostle Paul warns about during the last days, the time that we're in now, the very elect, and especially during the time of yeah. the Antichrist, that there will be a a great a falling, falling away, away from the yeah. faith, a great apostasy. Uh, do you know, I, I've been saying for 20 years that, that you know, my, my you know whole goal in my ministry, what I do teaching about the last days, is to make the great apostasy n- not not as so great, great. <laughs> a little a little less great, uh, yeah. which we're called to do. And yet at the same time, the Holy Spirit, he's actually, uh, you know, admonished me, you know, multiple times about this. 
but understand that that I can't me personally, mm-hmm. Ryan Speakman, I cannot change biblical prophecy. It's going to happen. Okay. Yeah, it is. We we need to be very soberly aware of of what what I what I'm saying here. That there is going to be in our generation a great apostasy, a great falling away from the Christian faith, which means a whole bunch of Christians are going to, you know, a lot of people who don't believe in once saved, always saved, they will go so far as to say, you know, lose their salvation or not, not lose it like you lose your car keys, but forfeit their salvation. Mm -hmm. There actually is a way to do that during the great tribulation, by the way, that's taking the mark of the beast. But, but even if we don't go that far or whatever, I I, I don't want to get too controversial here. You know, I'm joking when I say that. No, no, I don't. I don't want to be controversial. But um, but but it doesn't sound good. A, a, a great many Christians, millions of Christians in our generation who are going to fall away from the Christian faith or, or forfeit their Christian faith. I don't want to be in that group. I, I don't yeah. want you to be in Amen. that bill. I know you're not going to be in that. I don't want anyone who's listening to our voices right now to be in that group. And and the, the one sure way to avoid it is by being awake, having the knowledge keeping our ear to the ground, keeping our hand to the plow. And most importantly, like I always teach, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yep. That's, that's, that's a critical part of our walk with God. It is. I don't believe it's automatic. Like, like once you get saved then you're, you're automatically filled no, with the Holy Spirit. No, it's a separate event. The it's word a separate event. shows that. Yeah. So. And, and, and I pray it every single day, you know, the prayer of salvation, probably say that once and, and, and we're good. You know, Jesus comes in and, you know, we're, we're born again, Right. But um, asking the Holy Spirit to dwell in us, I pray that every single day. Holy Spirit, fill me today with your anointing. Anoint me for every encounter I'm going to have. Anoint me to be a blessing to to everyone who I'm in contact with. Uh, And most importantly, anoint me to advance the kingdom of the Father in this earth. And and so I, you know, that's 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 the main thing I encourage people to do. Pray that prayer throughout the day. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Anoint me. Speaking of prayer, Mm -hmm. need to go to prayer. Let's go to prayer. So could you close us in prayer this morning, Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd be honored to. So praise you, Father God. Lord, we just uh, uh, thank you for this morning, you, Father Jesus. God. We just uh, come before you now and give you all the honor and the praise and the glory, Father God. And, and, and we proclaim, Father, that, that it's our heart's desire that uh, this, this show that Bill and I are doing, that, uh, that, we, that, that our desire is to do this for your glory, for your honor, to bring honor to you, Father God. And uh, for each one listening, Father God, I just pray that you... Uh, fill all of us uh, with with a with a anointing of the Holy Spirit. Just Holy Spirit, I, uh, I invite you. Each one listening, just please receive this. Uh, Holy Spirit, we invite you to fill us with your anointing. Just anoint us for um, every encounter that we have today to accomplish everything that we need to accomplish today. Uh, anoint us to be the best fathers and mothers and husbands and wives and and friends and pastors and workers that we can possibly be, give us opportunities today to uh, share the gospel with others. And most importantly, Holy Spirit, we ask you to anoint us to advance the Father's kingdom in this earth. I just pray for a special blessing over Bill and Alan and uh, Farron, Debbie, all the staff and management of uh, your celebration station. And uh, just bless all of our listening audience today, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks again for joining us on this Friday morning. Thank you for coming in, Pastor Ryan Speakman. Appreciate you very much. And uh, we'll continue uh, these discussions, uh, well, in uh, two weeks. Two weeks. I can't wait. February 14th. We'll be ready. Amen.